Doodle Bud here, and today we're going to do a test. All of these fountain pens are equipped with flexible nibs. We're going to find out which one has the most flex and also which one writes the softest. To do that, I'm going to use this scale. I'm going to put a piece of paper onto this scale. I'll tape it on. I'll get this a little bit better. I'll zero it out. This has a maximum weight it can register of 200 grams. I will take a fountain pen, apply pressure up to the limit to about 200 grams, and then I'm going to measure that line width. Whoever has the widest line with the same pressure will be the softest writing nib. I will, of course, figure out maximum flex, which nib produces the widest line, which should be fairly easy to see. But one thing you want to know is, well, which one feels softer? And that's, of course, where the little scale will come in handy. What I want to do first just to make it tidy is just cut out some little squares to fit the scale a little bit neater. Wait a second. This should do the trick. They say smoke them if you got them, and I happen to have a laser, so I might as well do a good job of this. The reason we're doing this video is this pen right here. This is the new Magna Carta Mag 650. Just did a review on this. This thing really blew my mind. I also saw a comment from a viewer. They picked one up after the video, I guess. It arrived. They were so excited they actually dropped a comment at just how much this thing blew their mind. I had a little coffee get together with a fellow a member of the Vancouver Pen Club. He wanted me to bring this along. He tried it. He also tried both of them. He couldn't believe the difference on this one here. So I thought we have all these pens here. Is this all in our heads? Is this better? Does it have more flex or is it at least softer? And to me, this is the closest to vintage flex in a modern pen I've ever felt. So let's check this out. Let's go over the pens we're testing. We have several pens over here from India. This is a fountain pen revolution. Uh, I don't know if it's version one or two, but it has their ultra flex nib on it, steel. This also has a steel flex nib. This is Noodler Ahab. This is the untipped nib. This is a Magna Carta Mag 600 with their flex nib, the brand new Magna Carta Mag 650 with a flex nib. Both of those are gold. This is from the Good Blue, made in the UK. It has a titanium flex nib. I don't know exactly where the nib is made, if it's somewhere in the UK or if it's it possibly is India. Now we have Italy. So this is a vintage OMAS 556F with a flex nib, a vintage Pilot 140. I would say it's a semi-flex nib. And then rounding it off, we have a Japanese flex pen. This is the Pilot Custom 912 with an FA nib. This has also been custom ground by Josh Lax. I'm gonna start off with this right here. The 912, this I think, this is the softest flex nib I have. And I'm really curious, is this one still softer than the 650 or are they same or is this even softer? I will do my best to capture this on camera, but this is going to be tricky. So I'm just going to draw a few lines here just to get the hang of this. And I want to get that up to 200 is the goal. And if I can control that pressure, there we go. Right around there is 200. So I'm going to mark this region here for measurement. I'm going to put a little note so we know which pen this is trying to get the scale in the frame not block it with my hand and focus and flex and watch the scale at the same time there's a lot going on right here but let's see what we can do okay same region i'll do another line didn't quite get to max it out yet not pushing hard enough boy this is harder than than it looks folks i gotta tape the bottom as well the paper's moving on me a little bit Right at the end was right through there. Right there as well. So this took a long time to do. I thought I'd record it so you can see all the writing samples. But getting this technique down, it took a few tries. I had a few blank pages I used just to really master the technique. But I was fairly confident. I used Sargasso C by Diamine and all the pens to try to keep it consistent unless the pens were already inked. I thought I should just check the scale to make sure it reads the same with the calibration mass across the full uh, surface area of the scale. They were all reading 50, so I was happy about that. Just came to mind because I'm using the full surface of the scale and putting uneven pressure everywhere. I don't want it to skew the, uh, the results. Okay, the softness part is now complete. I have all the samples. Now we're going to do maximum flex. And using the same paper, what I'll do now is I'll do a little bit of writing, and then I'll do several full flex downstrokes, getting the maximum flex I can from each pen. 
Then we'll go ahead and do all the measurements. I have to tell you, I really enjoy making these videos for the channel, but these testing ones are some of my least favorite to do. It's not so much I don't enjoy doing them, I don't enjoy having to record them and edit them. This took hours, like so much longer than I anticipated to do. But I wanted to do this even just for myself and for viewers out there who have these types of questions. I figured I'm the guy to pull this off. So I just went through, did all these samples. It was quite interesting. I got to compare all the nibs all at once and you're not going off my memory anymore because you're comparing them side by side. And what I remember how a nib performs wasn't the same as when I actually got to compare them all doing all these writing samples. So you're going to see the results here shortly. But it's quite fun to do. The uh, fountain pen revolution was skipping a little bit. So I did some extra lines. I'm sure if I modify the feed a little bit, it could probably keep up. That's what I did to my Noodler's Ahab. And that thing is nuts. But that good blue, that thing just, you can push it hard. And it just keeps on going and going. It rarely, rarely ever skips. And that was just out of the box. I was super happy with that one. I'm going to let these samples dry for a moment before I do the measurement, but it's really cool to see. You can just see the difference in the pressure. You got maximum line width, and then we'll be able to check out the softness. Let me show you how I'm going to actually do the measurement. First, what I'm not going to do is take my calipers and get in there and try to accurately measure that because it's just not going to work out too well. We got to be a little bit better and get better precision. So for that, we're going to use magnification. It says 200x. It's 20x, but that will be good enough. I'm going to fit that to my phone. I'll walk you through a measurement and how I do this. And then I have a calibration slide. So having a zoom lens is cool to see details, but you can also do measurements. And so on here, as it says here, it's a calibration slide. See right there. And there's all these different gradients on here. So I'm going to use this one over here. It's a 0.1 millimeter division. You can just see it there in the reflection. And I'm going to put that over top, and then we can do a pretty accurate measurement, good visual reference. I'm going to walk you along, like I said, I'm going to record all of those, and then we can compare. Here's how it looks using the setup with the phone and the macro lens that's on there. It's not too bad, but I got something better. So this thing works, but it's a little bit finicky, and I have a lot of samples to do. So let's just use this setup right here. This is the nice little digital microscope I have. Had this a while ago, thought I would break it out. I can just go on here, I have different lenses I can use, proper lighting, put the slide down on there, I can adjust the zoom and focus so much better. We'll probably get a funky refresh on the video, but then I can go in here and just have a much, much better time at doing all these measurements. So I got lots to do, let me finish these off and look at the results. Here's a quick example of how I do it with the microscope, I can move the slide exactly where I want it. Perfect, there we go, then I jot down the result at the bottom. That took a little bit of time, so I went through, did all of the measurements, jotted them down, and we're going to go through the results. For softness, it's pretty easy. I'm picking essentially the widest line that the pen generates, averaging around that 200 grams of downward force. Obviously, the widest line for the same force means it's the softest. If we go along here, then we're going max, so I'm pushing as much as I can, as I'm willing to on a nib without going too far. I did the downward strokes, sort of the average on those, and then I also measured the widest part of the figure of eights, just in case the wideness is a little bit different when you're writing versus just doing downstrokes, and there was some differences that I found. So let's go through those right now. Now, I don't know if this made it into the final cut after all the editing or not, but this is the pen I used to jot down all the results. I didn't want to use a fountain pen to write all these numbers because I could, they could smudge. I'd have to wait for them to dry. Maybe I get some water on them. So I'm using this. This is the Enso Uno XL Minimalist. It takes refills by pilot there's two different two different sizes he has the regular and the xl i can leave some information below but this thing's really good for jotting down details fine notes and fine lines and uh, yeah this thing was a breeze here are the results first we'll go through softness now you can see the largest number is coming from the mag 650 we're getting 1.3 millimeters of line width on that 200 grams of downforce after that the pilot fa that comes in at 1.1 the MAG 600, so these are all gold nibs here. The MAG 600 and actually the Fountain Pen Revolution, the Ultraflex, their steel, both are doing one millimeter of line width on that same downward pressure. After that, the Good Blue, the titanium version, 
that's getting 0.95. The OMAS 556 is 85, 0.8 on the 140, and the Neuler's Ahab is 0.8 as well. So I think you know what I mean when I notice that this 650 is significantly softer than the 600. It is definitely a very soft flexi nib. Now we're doing absolute maximum flex. So this column here is the average, I would say, of the downstrokes I did, and then a measurement I did on the figure of eights. So the 912 and the 650 are fairly close for the average on the down, but 1.8, 1.85. I did get a little bit wider on that one figure of eight on the 650. So 2.1, the 600, 1.55, 1 1.7. If it's any, if it's 0.55, it was sort of in between 1.6 and 1.5. I can see that through the uh, microscope there. The OMAS and the uh, Pelican, very, very close to each other. One and a half for the maximum on those. The Ultraflex Steel, there was one point, that's a 2.1, not a 2.7. So 2.1 was the max, 1.9, so fairly consistent there. The Good Blue, this thing had the, the most maximum flex and decent, you know, for that same pressure. It wasn't by far the, the softest, but not too bad, but 2.9 millimeters. So we're getting very close to three millimeters uh, with this titanium one. I, I knew I can get a lot of out of this nib, I didn't know it was quite that much. And then the Ahab, two millimeters was the average. And I did max it out at one spot. I got really fat and that was super saturated. I have heavily, heavily modified this feed. So it is a very wet one. That could be that outlier there, but we're still, we're getting well over two millimeters on the Ahab. And again, this is untipped. So that was a bunch of work to do, but also I had some fun doing it. I hope you had fun watching it. Like I said in my review, this 650, there is something very, very nice about it. Super soft rider, lots of flex, that's great. I'm not exactly shocked that this took first place for most flex. I've noticed that you can get a ton of flex out of these. The feed keeps up, fun to use, really, really great. All of these pens were great to use. They're all fun. It doesn't always have to be like the maximum flex makes it the best. But here are the numbers in case you were wondering which is my favorite flex pen out of the bunch it's the 650 by far <laughs> it's an absolute joy to use but i really still do like my little 140 it fits in the hand nice all the results i jotted down was with the 140 i find it's a very natural writer and uh, it's got some nice flex not over the top and it just feels feels really nice in the hand this one you can use it as a daily writer, but you really have to be mindful of super light pressure when you're doing it. With the 140, it just seems a little more intuitive and you give it a little bit of pressure and you get some nice flex. So anyways, these are my flex pens that I currently have. I know there's no uh, classic Waterman's wet noodle pen that would probably blow all these out of the gate, but that's okay. This is what I got. Again, if you had fun watching this, hit the subscribe. Links will be for all these pens down there in the bottom so you can get some more information. And we'll catch you next time.